Hey, Lisa here. If you are in the web scraping space, you might know that it's been all about automation during the past few years. Web scraping and automation with JavaScript have evolved a lot. There are a few methods to access and parse websites, but in this tutorial, we'll discuss how to do it with Google Puppeteer. We have a lot of work to do, so let's get right into it. Number one, automating web scraping. Generally speaking, there are two methods to access and parse web pages. The first method uses packages like Axios. It directly sends a GET request to the web page and receives HTML content. This can then be parsed using packages like Cheerio. We covered this process in depth in our JavaScript web scraping tutorial. Check the description for the link. Unfortunately, this method has its drawbacks. For example, it can't handle dynamic websites, aka websites that are JavaScript rendered. Here is where headless browsers come to save the day. Let's find out more. Number two, what is a headless browser? A headless browser is simply a browser but without a graphical user interface. Think of it as a hidden browser where everything is controlled programmatically. Conveniently enough, browsers like Chrome and Firefox support headless mode. There are a few more browsers with headless mode supported. For example, Splash and Chromium, which we'll be using in this tutorial. Just so you know, Chromium is an open source web browser made by Google and it's not the same as Google Chrome. So now that you know what a headless browser is, let's swiftly move on to the next point. Number three, controlling the browsers automatically. There are several solutions to control headless browsers with Selenium being the most widely known one. We have a blog post covering the topic, but just to quickly answer if Puppeteer is better than Selenium, yes, it actually is a better choice if you are looking for a lightweight and fast headless browser for web scraping. This Puppeteer tutorial will cover web scraping with Puppeteer in much detail. Puppeteer, however, is a Node.js package, making it exclusive for JavaScript developers. Luckily, there is a similar option for Python programmers, and it's called Puppeteer. Puppeteer sounds an awful lot similar to Puppeteer. So what is it exactly? It is actually an unofficial part of Puppeteer for Python. It also bundles Chromium and works real smooth with it. Puppeteer can work with Chrome as well, similar to Puppeteer. The syntax is very similar. It uses the Syncio library for Python, except for the syntactical differences between Python and JavaScript. At the moment, you can see the Puppeteer example on the screen. And now you can see an example of Puppeteer. As you can see, the code is very similar. For scraping dynamic websites, Puppeteer can be an excellent alternative to Selenium for Python developers. But for the sake of this tutorial, the following sections will cover Puppeteer, starting with the installation. Number four, installation. Before moving on with this Puppeteer tutorial, let's get the basic tools installed. There are only two pieces of software that will be needed, Node.js and any code editor. The only thing that you need to know about Node.js is that it is a runtime framework. This means that JavaScript code, which typically runs in a browser, can run without a browser. Before writing any code to web scrape using Node.js, create a folder where JavaScript files will be stored. All the code for Puppeteer is written in JS files and is run by Node. Once the folder is created, navigate to this folder and run the initialization command as we are doing right now. This will create a package.json file in the directory. This file will contain information about the packages that are installed in this folder. The next step is to install the Node.js packages in this folder. How do you run Puppeteer? Installing Puppeteer is very easy. Just run the npm install command from the terminal. Note that the working directory should be the one that contains package.json. Now let's install Puppeteer, which is very easy. You just run the npm install command from the terminal. Note that the working directory should be the one that contains package.json. Number five, getting started with Puppeteer. Puppeteer is a promise-based library, which means it performs asynchronous calls. This Puppeteer tutorial will have all the examples in a sync await syntax. Additionally, if you want to integrate proxies with Puppeteer, check out our Puppeteer proxy integration guide. The link will be in the description. Okay, now we'll demonstrate a simple example of using Puppeteer. Let's create a new file in your node project directory, aka the directory that contains package.json and node modules. We're saving this file as example1.js and adding this code.
The code can be simplified by making the function anonymous and calling it on the same line. The required keyword will ensure that the Puppeteer library is available in the file. The rest of the lines are the placeholder where an anonymous, asynchronous function is being created and executed. For the next step, let's launch the browser. Note that by default, the browser is launched in the headless mode. If there is an explicit need for a user interface, the line can be modified to include an object as a parameter. The next step would be to open a page. Now that a page or, in other words, a tab is available, any website can be loaded by simply calling the goTo function. Once the page is loaded, the DOM elements and the rendered page are available. This can be verified by taking a quick screenshot. This, however, will create only an 800 on 600 pixel image. The reason is that Puppeteer sets an initial page size to 800 on 600 pixels. Before you take the screenshot, you can change this by setting the viewport. Finally, remember to close the browser. Run this file from the terminal using this command. This should create a new file, oxylabs1080.png in the same directory. By the way, a bonus tip, if you need a PDF, just use the PDF function. Number 6. Scraping an element from a page. Puppeteer loads the complete page in DOM, so we can extract any type of data from this page. The easiest way to do this is to use the function evaluate. This allows us to execute JavaScript functions like document query selector. At the same time, it lets us extract any element from the DOM. For demonstration, we are now opening a Wikipedia page about web scraping. You can do it on any preferred browser. Once the page is loaded, right-click the heading of the page and select Inspect. This should open developer tools with the Elements tab activated. Here you can see that the page's heading is an H1 element with ID and class both set to first heading. Now go to the Console tab in the Developer Toolbox and write in this line. This returns one element from the page. For this particular element, all we need is text. Text can be easily extracted with this line of code. The text can now be returned using the return keyword. The next step is to surround this in the evaluate method. This will ensure that this query selector can be run. The result of the evaluate function can be stored in a variable to complete the functionality. Finally, don't forget to close the browser. Here is the complete script. Number 7. Scraping multiple elements. Extracting multiple elements would involve three steps. Step 1. Use Query Selector All to get all the elements matching the selector. Step 2. Create an array as heading elements is of type node list. Step 3. Call the map function to process each element in the array and return it. This of course needs to be surrounded by the page evaluate function. Putting everything together, this is what the full script looks like. Another bonus tip, 
array from function can be supplied with a map function directly without a separate call to map. Depending on the comfort level, the same code can be written like this. Number 8. Scraping a hotel listing page Now we'll explain how a typical listing page can be scraped to get a JSON object with all the required information. You can apply this tactics for any listing, whether it is an online store, a directory or a hotel listing. For this tutorial, we'll be using Airbnb. Let's apply some filters so that you reach a page similar to the one on the screen. In this particular example, we'll be scraping this Airbnb page that lists 20 hotels. To scrape all hotels, the first step is to identify the selector for each hotel section. Keep in mind that Airbnb's page structure changes constantly, so you've got to make sure to find appropriate selectors each time. This returns a node list of length 20 and stores it in the variable root. Note that so far, text or any attribute has not been extracted. All we have is an array of elements. This will be done in the map function. The hotel name can be extracted with this line. The most important concept to understand here is that we are concatenating query selectors. Effectively, the first hotel name is being extracted with this line of code. The URL of the photo of the hotel can be extracted with a code like this. Now, let's run the final script. And that's all. Have you tried using Puppeteer and Headless Browser to scrape data from a page? Or do you have other preferred ways for it? Let us know in the comments below. Once again, this was Liza, and I'll see you again with a different topic. Bye!